Now let's look at a different type of um, electrochemical environment, which is depth change in potential. It is type of amperometry. You measure current ampere metry with time, but under the condition of diffusion control and uh, with a step change in potential. So let's look at the general reaction of oxidized species combined with electron to form reduced species. For simplicity, let's assume initial uniform concentration within the system, within the electrolyte. The static solution, if we are using a liquid um, electrolyte, let's assume static solution without stirring, no um, forced uh, mass transfer, no convection. Then we say step change in potential, but let's assume we have a large step change in potential. Step change in potential, we are plotting potential versus time. Initially, potential for the working electrode, let's assume it's E1, and you step it. Could be up, could be down. Let's assume it steps down, which means make it more negative, so that for the reduction reaction can happen. Okay, step change, large step change in potential. So how large? So large enough that the active species would be zero at the electrode surface. The species of interest would be zero at the electrode surface. For example, if we are considering uh, going from left to, to right, reduction of OX to RED, then the OX concentration becomes zero with the large enough uh, step, la negative enough step, okay, from E1 to E2. So when we have this large enough of potential, when the surface concentration of the active species of the reactant is zero, then the reaction would go into the region of so-called diffusion control. Diffusion control, okay? And then this is fixed second law from mass transfer. It, it says the local concentration change with time would be the partial differential, secondary partial differential of the local concentration with respect to location. X is for location. Under this condition, this will be the governing equation for the mass transport. Still, again, remind ourselves there's no stirring without stirring. It's a static solution, or sometimes people say quiescent solution, no forced convection. Okay, and also quite often we neglect uh, migration. Under this condition, um, the governing equation in order to solve it analytically, we need the boundary condition. And the boundary condition, the first one would be initial condition, which means at time equals zero, at time equals zero, T equals zero, the concentration in the system is a constant value. That's what we said, initial uniform concentration. Initial uniform concentration, which means at t equals zero, no matter what x is, the concentration is always this value, C ac active species, star for this baseline concentration. Then for the boundary two boundary condition, one would be for x equals zero, x equals zero, which means at the interface, between the electrode and the, the electrolyte. At any time t, we have zero concentration. That's what we said, large step, large step. In this case, large negative step so that the surface concentration for the oxidized species is fixed at zero, no matter what time it is. That's one boundary condition. The other boundary condition is respect to far away from the interface. X goes towards infinity. Far away from the, the interface, the local concentration, X, at any given time, T would be this um, initial concentration. Far away from the interface, the concentration is not impacted. That's what we said. We have three conditions. One initial condition says at uh, time equals zero, the concentration is uniform. The other one is 
at uh, the interface right and interface we said the large step the surface concentration for the active species if we are doing reduction the ox dies the species would be zero and then deep within the system far away from the interface then at any given time t as long as it's far away then the concentration also has now changed from the initial uniform concentration so under this condition, the partial differential equation has an analytical solution. And the J for current density at time T would be NF times D for diffusion coefficient for the active species. If we are dealing with reduction, the diffusion coefficient for OX species um, times the gradient the concentration gradient at the interface x equals zero at the interface between the electrode and the electrolyte and this um, part diffusion coefficient times concentration gradient that gives us a flux of species times nf that gives us a charge would be we can show that nf diffusion coefficient to the power of 0.5 times the concentration over pi to the power of 0.5 over t to the power of 0.5 okay the current density would be related to the time actually square root of time by this relationship inversely proportional to the square root of time by a constant if we know the initial concentration, C active species star for the uniform concentration, everything else will be constant. So what that means is if we are going to plot current density versus the inverse of um, square root of T, we would have a straight line inverse of square root of t we would have a straight line and the slope for this straight line the slope for this straight line would be from here nfd to the power 0.5 times the initial concentration over pi to the power 0.5 okay and this slope relationship can be used to measure diffusion coefficient if you know the initial concentration or if you know the diffusion coefficient and you can determine the initial concentration this equation between current density and uh, the in the square root of time t is called Cotterell equation Cotterell equation and quite often people use it to measure a series of current versus time and then plot current versus the inverse of time to the power of 0.5 and the slope would give us either diffusion coefficient if we know the initial concentration or the initial concentration if you know the diffusion coefficient okay and then the concentration at arbitrary location at arbitrary time can also be obtained analytically it will be the initial concentration times the error function of x over um, 2 times square root of dt square root of dt x is the location t is the time so for any location at any given time we can know the concentration if the condition satisfies what we listed here initial uniform concentration no stirring in the solution large enough potential steps so that surface concentration is zero and then we would get this relationship what this means is if we plot concentration versus the initial bulk concentration with respect to time t initially Uh, the concentration is at 1 and then the over time the concentration will surface concentration goes towards 0 and the deep inside the system deep in the solution electrolyte solution the concentration hasn't changed 
and then we would have a series of curves for different time. The longer the time t3 greater than t2 then greater than t1, the longer the time, the lower the initial slope. And uh, as a result, the lower the current for the system. So this would be the amperometry, measurement of current with time with a constant potential step. And uh, if it's into the diffusion control region, we can have analytical solution as what we shown here. Now let's look at the general case for amperometry. Amperometry, measurement of current with time with step change in potential. Okay, so still let's look at the half cell reaction between oxidized species combined with N electron to form reduced species. Make the similar assumption initial uniform concentration. The static solution, which means no stirring or forced convection in the system, initial positive enough um, potential for the working electrode, and the no, if we are looking at reduction, no reduced species. Okay, so we would still start from a positive enough potential, and with different potential steps: one, two, three, four, and five. So this is what we said. Potential versus time. Initially, system at E0, positive enough. And then you go a negative potential bias. One, two, three, four, five. Five different experiments. And then hold the potential at each of those potential values. And then, as we said before, the reaction would consume oxidized species near the interface and it is because no stirring we are relying on diffusion to bring the active species if for reduction the ox species to the electrode electrolyte interface and sustain the current and then you can imagine with all these different potential step size we would have different situation or different current that corresponds to the potential and uh, for example for the case of one for the case of one we may have too small a potential step not enough negative potential and when you have too small potential too little driving force that may not be current zero reduction current which means at this condition if we plot current uh, versus time, it will be zero and it will not change from zero. Okay, because it's not um, negative enough to drive the reduction or cathodic reaction. And then for situation two, for situation two, we have a larger or more negative potential state. There might be some current in this particular case, a cathodic or reduction current. And then the current would decrease gradually with time. The current would decrease gradually with time. Why? Because we are um, depleting the oxidized species gradually and we are relying on diffusion. So the concentration gradient near the interface would be lower and lower with time. So we have current, but the current will gradually decrease over time. And then for situation three, we have an even larger step, even more negative step. As you can imagine, we would have a even higher initial current, but it still also decays with time. And for the number four situation, the potential step or is large enough, or in this case, negative enough that it directly lands in the mass transfer limited zone, mass transport limitation. It starts from the highest current possible and then start to decrease. Okay. And then finally, if you go beyond the four, go to five, it is even 
larger step, even more negative step than four, but because it's already limited by the mass transport limitation, it the current cannot go any larger. So for, for both four and five, we would have the same current um, profile waste time. Okay. So this gives us the situation for different uh, potential step, we would have different uh, current profile with time. And then let's say if we fixed on a given time, fixed at a given time, and examine the how does the current change with respect to the applied potential. Okay, we would have these different points. And then if we plot current or current density, and the time tau at time tau versus the potential size, potential step size, we would have 0.1, zero current, 0.2, slightly higher, 0.3, higher, and 0.4, highest, and 0.5, the same value because we are already limited by current, uh, by mass transfer. Okay, then we would have a curve from, we would have a curve, okay, and uh, of course this side is more negative, we would have these curves that tell, linked the current density with potential, okay, and uh, these types of plot will help us to understand the fundamentals for the reaction, but here in this course, we only deal with the concept for this case. It is a general case for amperometry. We would have current at different uh, potential value, okay? And this curve tells us something about fundamental uh, reaction process and diffusion in the system.